Our last section for chapter 8 is to take everything that we've learned in chapter 8 and apply it in to factor polynomials completely. So, so far we've been able to factor, pull out greatest co common monomial factors. We have been able to factor trinomials that had a 1 for the coefficient for the x squared, factor trinomials that had any, the integers for the coefficient in front of x squared. We have factored um, our special products. And now what we're going to do is we're going to learn one other thing. We're going to learn how to factor cubic four-term polynomials. And then we're going to take that and factor things completely, which means you keep on factoring until you can't factor it anymore. So the first one I want to show you is the rule for cubics, which is something that has an x cubed in it with four terms. An example of this would be x cubed plus 5x squared plus 3x plus 15. That is a cubic polynomial with four terms. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to do grouping. And in the section for factoring um, AX squared plus BX plus C, I already showed you how to do grouping. Okay? Remember, we split the middle term up into two terms to do factoring by grouping before. Well, I've already got things that are split up, so we're just going to start out by doing our next step, which is parentheses around the first two, parentheses around the last two, plus sign in between. Parentheses around first two, last two, and a plus sign in between. Next step is we're going to pull out the greatest common factor out of each group. The greatest number that's in common between 1 and 5 is just 1. And the lowest power of x in here is x squared. The greatest number between 3 and 15 that's in common would be 3. And the lowest power of x is x to the 0, so I'm just going to leave that here. My first factor is this plus this. My second factor is x cubed divided by x squared, which is x, then 5x squared divided by x squared, which is plus 5. I can check the work by doing the second division, and I better get the same answer. 3x divided by 3 is x. 15 divided by 3 is, in fact, 5. Okay. The next one... I am going to do is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 6. Okay. First step is parentheses around the first two, parentheses around the last two, plus sign in between the two. Factor out the greatest common factor. One goes into both of these. Lowest power of x is x squared. Two goes into both of these, and lowest power of x is x to the zeroth, so I don't put anything. My first factor is x squared plus two. My last factor is the division. x cubed divided by x squared is x. Negative 3x squared divided by x squared is minus 3. I can check my division by doing this set. 2x divided by 2 is x. Negative 6 divided by 2 is, in fact, negative 3. So this is a new one. Okay, So we need, you need to practice factoring by grouping on four-term cubic functions. And then the rest of the examples I'm going to work through is we're going to take all of the previous Chapter 8 factoring stuff, as well as factoring by grouping, to factor things as much as possible. Next four examples I'm going to do, um, 
I'm going to work through these. These are just fact. The directions will be factor completely. And um, after factoring these completely, the last examples I'm going to do are be solve equations after you factor them completely. So the first one, I have a cubic, but it only has three terms. So I can't use that factoring by grouping. But so what I want to look for is any greatest common factors. And I do have a greatest common factor, which is x. So I pull out an x. x cubed divided by x is x squared. Negative 8x squared divided by x is negative 8. And 16x divided by x is 16. Then what I want to do is I want to look to see what I have left over and can I factor it even more. Well, I have a perfect square and a perfect square. So that should be square root of the first, square root of the last, copy the sign, all squared. Check my work. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 times x is negative 8x. See? I messed that up. When I did the division, negative 8x squared divided by x should have been negative 8x. So that would be my final answer. Again, I have a cubic, but I don't have four terms, so it's not factoring by grouping. I have x cubed minus 25x. I can pull an x out of both of these. That leaves me with x squared minus 25. That's my difference of square patterns. So it's the square root of the first plus square root of the last times square root of the first minus square root of the last. So my final answer would be x times x plus 5 times x minus 5. So again, factoring completely, look for those common factors to pull out and then use the other patterns that we have learned how to factor. Next one, pull out an x. So I have x cubed minus 7x squared plus 12x, pull out an x. That leaves me with x squared minus 7x plus 12. So I want two numbers that are both negative. Okay, I get that because the same sign that are negative. That multiply to 12, that add to negative 7, and that would be negative 3 and negative 4. Okay, this is the amount of work I need to see on these type of problems. Last one is another one grouping problem example. Parentheses around the first two, parentheses around the last two, plus sign in between the two. So I now have 4x cubed plus 8x squared plus the quantity of negative 4x minus 8. Greatest common factor of the first group. Well, 4 goes into both 4 and 8. x squared is the lowest power of x. 4 goes into both negative 4 and negative 8. However, if you've got a negative for this first term, always pull out a negative. Okay? So my first factor is 4x squared minus 4, okay, which I notice there's a 4 in both of these, so I could write it as 4x squared minus 1. And now let's find the other factor. I get 4 divided by 4 is 1. x cubed divided by x squared is x. 8 divided by 4 is 2. x squared divided by x squared is 1. Check the division. Negative 4x divided by negative 4 is x. Negative 8 divided by negative 4 is 2. I still can factor it because I have a difference of squares pattern. So I have the square root of the first plus square root of the last times square root of the first minus square root of the last and copy my other factor. Notice that I could have done this difference of square patterns, and that would have been 2x plus 2 and 2x minus 2. And each of those, I would have been able to pull a 2 out, and the 2 times 2 would have been 4. I got this. I try to pull out common factors. Another thing I could have done is I could have pulled a 4 out of everything to begin with. And if I would have done that, I would have had 4 times x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. And from that point, I would have been able to factor it and came up with those factors. 
So you need to practice using these things. And the only way to get good at these is practice. And I'm going to do four more examples, and that'll be it for the video. In the last four examples, what I'm going to do is factor and then solve these equations. Okay, so first thing in order to solve an equation, you need to get every term onto one side <coughs> and a zero on the other. And then use our factoring stuff that we did. So everything's on one side except for the zero, which is good. This is a four-term cubic, and we learned that four-term cubics, we do grouping, which is parentheses around the first two, parentheses around the last two, plus sign in between the two. Okay, and what I have is x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4 equals 0. Okay, so what I'm going to do is greatest common factor of the first group is x squared. Greatest common factor of the last group is minus 4. So that is my first term. My other term would be x plus 1. This still factors as x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x plus 1. Now I set each of my factors equal to 0. If x plus 2 is equal to 0, x would be equal to negative 2. x minus 2 equal to 0, x would equal 2. And x plus 1 equals 0, x would equal negative 1. I do not need to see the work once it's in factored form to come up with those three answers. The next problem is 5x cubed minus 30x squared plus 40x equals 0. should recognize that this is a cubic, but it only has three terms, but I have a common factor in each of these. I have a common number, and then I can pull out an x. The common number I have in each is a 5. The lowest power of x in the three terms is 1. So 5x cubed divided by 5x is x squared. Negative 30 divided by 5 is negative 6. x squared divided by x is x. 40 divided by 5 is 8. x divided by x is 1. And that's equal to 0. Factor this. Two numbers that multiply to an 8 that add to negative 6 with both of them being negative would be a negative 4 and a negative 2. I now have it factored, so I set each factor equal to 0. When 5x is equal to 0, I know that x is equal to 0. When x minus 4 is equal to 0, I know x is equal to 4. And when x minus 2 is equal to 0, I know x is equal to 2. Third example. I have 3x plus 1 equals x squared plus 3x cubed. So my first step is to get everything to one side of the equation with a 0 on the other. And I'm always going to move stuff so that the highest powered term is positive when I get done. So I'm going to move everything over here to the right and then write it in standard form. So the 3x cubed stays the same. The x squared stays the same, minus the 3x, because I'm moving it over here, minus 1. Now what I'm going to do is I recognize that I have a four-term cubic. The only way we know how to do a four-term cubic right now is by grouping. Parentheses around the first two, parentheses around the last two, plus sign in between the two. Greatest common factor of the first group is x squared. Greatest common factor of the last group would be minus 1. So my first factor is x squared minus 1. 3x cubed divided by x squared is 3x. x squared divided by x squared is 1. That's equal to 0. Check my division. Negative 3x divided by negative 1 is, neg is 3x. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 is 1. I can still factor the x squared minus 1. That gives me x plus 1 times x minus 1. Once it's fully factored, then I can set each factor equal to 0. So if x plus 1 is 0, x is equal to negative 1. 
if x minus 1 is 0, x is equal to 1. And if 3x plus 1 is 0, x is equal to negative 1 third. And our last problem is 12x minus 3x cubed equals 0. I recognize that I have a common factor. I can pull a 3 out of both, and I can pull a x out of both. So I end up with a 3x. 12x divided by 3x is 4. Negative 3x cubed divided by 3x is minus x squared, and that's equal to 0. This still factors. So I have 3x times square root of the first plus square root of the last, and then square root of the first minus square root of the last. Set each factor equal to 0. If 3x is equal to 0, then x is equal to 0. If 2 plus x is equal to 0, x is equal to negative 2. And if 2 minus x is equal to 0, x is equal to positive 2. So that's it for chapter 8. Your um, two problems that are going to be assigned tonight out of the homework are on page 552. I want you to do number 35. And then on page 553, you're going to do 54. Again, those two problems will be provided on the half sheet that will be passed out in class. If you are not here in class, you need to do those two problems when you take your notes. Make sure all the examples I did are in your notes.